Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic, device history file. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If this is the first executive series video that you've seen, please go back and look at the executive series introduction. In the video description below, you can find links to all supporting information and a summary of the information that we will cover. In my executive series, we have four main agenda items. You can see those in the progress bar below. Make sure you stick around to the end for those three bonus questions. Our requirement today, device history file, comes directly from 820.30J and ISO 1345 section 7.3.10. Device history file in five words. Maintain records, proving regulatory compliance. You have to have a procedure that defines how you manage your device history file. When you think of the device history file, what I want you to think about is it's a compilation of all the records that you've generated throughout your design process. And it provides proof that you followed all of your design and development procedures. It is your design plan, all revisions. Your design input document, all revisions. Your design outputs, all the revisions. Your design verification protocol, your design verification reports. Design validation protocols and reports. Transfer plans, transfer reports, and all the changes that go along with that. Your design reviews. So how do I know this is working? Well first, you have an index that defines all of the records that you're going to generate throughout the design and development process. Second, that index points to where those records reside. Third, as you go through the design process, when you move from one step to the next or one phase to the next, you're confirming that you have all of the required records. And then finally, during any audits of your design history file, all of the records are present and nothing is missing. So how do I know this is not working? Well, first, you're missing documents that are required to be in your design history file or those documents are not approved, or they're missing approvals. Second, your procedure and or the index is missing information that it should have, which leads to non-conformances later. And then finally, updates and changes made to your device once it's in the market, those changes are not linked back to the actual design history file, so you're missing that information as your product evolves once it's out in the marketplace. Now, those three bonus questions. How do we establish and maintain a device history file? Second, is our device history file electronic? So do we have an index that points to everything? Or is it a physical file that's in one big filing cabinet that we will roll into the room if an auditor wants to see it? Then finally, where did the device history file actually reside? Are they in an electronic system or are they in a physical filing cabinet? Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you have any questions, please send me an email at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Never stop learning.